Faith Church family, I am thankful for this opportunity to share God's Word with you. The Timothy Christian Middle School and High School have two theme verses for this year. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 23 to 24. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, because he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. As I have meditated on these words this year, I have been drawn to the context of this passage, and that has then resulted in the sermon that I'm going to share with you now. The scripture reading is Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 to 25. Hear God's word. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. Almighty God, we humbly ask that these powerful truths of your word would sink deep into our lives and change us for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. I would like to share from this text uh, our location, our longing, and our living. So first, let's think about our location. Right now, just asking, where would you like to be? Maybe some of you have a specific spot in mind, maybe right now or, or next week. Uh, maybe some of you are thinking about people and I really want to be with these people. If you were to ask me, um, and this is not gonna happen, but something I would just so enjoy would to be would be to go hiking in old growth forest in the Pacific Northwest, because I haven't really explored that part of the US, uh, go hiking there with my family. So we all might have an answer to where I would like to be. But as we look at this text, we understand that the most important place to be is in God's presence. To be in God's presence is the best. Now, we may think we know we should want that, but sometimes we think that may not, that may not be that fun. But God wants so much more for you than just fun or your enjoyment or getting what you want. Almighty God earnestly desires a close, deep relationship with you. And in that relationship, he feeds into you his love, his joy, and his peace. What is the perfect place to be? It is in God's presence. And when we're in God's presence, we experience perfect peace, total contentment. All is well with our soul. Also in God's presence, we see that God is a perfect protector. God is the one who is steadfast, who is faithful, who is trustworthy, who is our rock. That is Almighty God. So the best place to be is in God's presence. The problem is sin. Sin separates us from God. Sin keeps us away from a holy God. But what does the text say? Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place, and the most holy place is God's presence, 
because we have confidence to enter into God's presence by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, so we see that our sin no longer keeps us separate from God because through Jesus, our sin has been paid for. Through Jesus, our great high priest has gone before us into God's presence. Now, there's a lot to be said about this idea of curtain and tabernacle and temple, but just let me say this. The curtain separated the people from God's presence. But through Jesus, a new and living way was opened up. The old way was sacrifice of animals. And then even after that, you couldn't go into God's presence. A priest, only a priest could go. And that was only once a year. But through Jesus, we can boldly and with confidence enter the very presence of God. What a blessing that is. And what God wants for us is to grow in that understanding that being in God's presence is the perfect place, the most wonderful place that we would want to be. So, our location, the presence of God. Now, secondly, our longing, our longing. So, I ask you, what do you want? What's important to you? What do you truly desire? Now, oftentimes, we can desire very good things, and, and God has created us with the capacity to enjoy and to desire things, so that's fine. But often, we desire good things, and then we begin to obsess about those good things, or we put those good things uh, too high of a, make them too high of a priority in our lives. And then the good thing becomes not a good thing. Also, there are times, and we would rather not admit this, that there are sinful things that we know are wrong, and yet, if we were honest, we still desire to participate in those sinful things. Almighty God, through Jesus, wants to transform our desires, our longings, the the text goes on to say, let us draw near to God. Let us long to be in God's presence. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. So we can draw into God's presence with a sincere heart and with full assurance. Why? Because Jesus has forgiven our sin, cleansed us from a guilty conscience, but he has not only forgiven our sins, he has made us righteous. And uh, we have this idea of baptism here, our bodies washed with water so that we are clean. And so we have this confidence, forgiven and in Jesus' righteousness. Now, you might ask, well, we're already in God's presence through Jesus, so why does the Bible say, let us draw near to God? Well, the idea of drawing near to God is, is simply living life with a greater awareness of God's presence, having a greater desire to go deeper in your relationship with God. And all of us need to grow in er those areas of our life. We need to grow in our longing to be in a God's presence, our longing to be more aware of God's presence in the details of the everydayness of our life, and also our longing to just grow deeper in our relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, maybe you're listening to this message and you realize that your longing is lacking. And God is even now starting to stir in your heart, giving you a greater longing. So if you would like to grow in your longing uh, with God and drawing near to God, um, 
I have just one idea. There's lots of ideas, but I have a little project for you. I would challenge you to go to the book of Psalms and go to the longest Psalm, Psalm 119, 176 verses. The challenge is to read this Psalm out loud for several days or even a week in a row. Read Psalm 119 out loud all at one time. It should only take you about 20 minutes. It may seem like a long time, but allow this psalm to mentor you. In this psalm, you will find a writer with a heart that is bursting with longing for God and also a longing to honor God with one's life. So that's one idea in growing in your longing with God. So our location through Jesus we can boldly come before God and be in his presence. Although we need to grow in our desires in a way that pleases God, and uh, God wants to give us a desire so that we are more aware of his presence and grow deeper in our relationship with him. And when that happens, it will necessarily have an effect on how you live. And so the text goes on, let us hold unswervingly to the hope uh, that we profess. Now, I think all humans want to live with hope. God has put this within our heart. We want to live with hope. Um, we hope for a better future. We hope for finishing school or a good job or financial security. We hope for harmonious relationships, a long life to feel well. We, we hope for a good economy or that the weather cooperates. Now, all of these things are nice to hope for, but they do not make uh, for an ultimate hope. They're no good for that because ultimately, each one of these smaller things will fail. There is only one place to truly put our hope, and that is in God, because he is the creator, our savior, and as the Bible says, he is faithful to his promises. He is the one in, which, in whom we are to hope. And what a blessed life to live with that hope bubbling within us. Now, secondly, it talks about our relationships. And uh, when we draw near to God and live with hope, this should have an effect on our relationships with family, church members, with friends. Now, people we're with affect us. That's just a fact of life. In fact, there are some people that will act completely different depending on who they're with. They may, may be with friends and they act one way, and then they're with family and they act a different way because who they're with affects how they live. Now, if we are drawing near to God and live with this awareness of God's presence, that is so strong within us that that will affect us and not other people won't as much as, as God will affect us. This, the Bible calls living in the fear of the Lord. And then we understand that God has a call on every one of our lives to be a blessing to others. There are ways in which God wants to use you that he could never use me in somebody else's life. So all of us are important as God's children in his kingdom to spur one another on to love and good deeds. We must never allow other people to affect us to not love and sinful deeds. We should never allow people to, to affect us on a path that's, that's lazy in faith. As we dwell in God's presence, God is calling us to see other people and to see ways and opportunities in which we can bless them by spurring them on, by encouraging them on in love and good deeds to honor and glorify God. What a beautiful message that uh, Hebrews chapter 10 has for us. And so I want you to consider as you think about these words, where are you? Where do you want to be? 
May God work within us an answer that truthfully says, not just the Sunday school answer, but truthfully says, I want to be in God's presence and I can because of the work of Jesus Christ. May we all have a greater longing to draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance of faith. And may God use each one of us to live in a way that encourages, blesses, and builds up other people. You know, these words are so beautiful. I would like to, and, and powerful, I'd like to end my reflections by once again reading Hebrews 10, 19 to 25. Hear God's word, friends. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Let's pray. Gracious and mighty God, we thank you for these truths in your word. We are so grateful, eternally grateful, that you have provided the Lord Jesus Christ as our sacrifice and high priest so that we might boldly enter your presence. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would stir within our hearts, giving us a greater longing to draw near to God. And we humbly ask, O Lord, that you might use us day by day to be a blessing in the lives of others so that they, in turn, might be faithful in their walk to, with you. We pray this in the mighty and matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Blessings, friends.